Buildings, that's the former Momentum and Metropolitan, uh, the joined up companies. Uh, JSC Listed Financial Services Group has acquired the remaining 50% uh, equity stake in United Metropolitan. That's formerly UBA Metropolitan. That's, of course, in Nigeria, a big financial services company there. So it owns 100% now. Uh, Bloom Khan is MMI Holdings as Chief Executive for Africa and Southeast Asia. Joins us now from Cape Town uh, to do more details. Bloom, I suppose there's one number which justifies a move like this, and that is that uh, insurance penetration in Nigeria is apparently less than 1% of the population. Yes, good evening, David. So, I think... Yeah, tell us about, about the, uh, the deal. Yeah, thank you very much, and thanks for the opportunity. I think, as you point out, uh, the Nigerian market um, is now the number one economy in Africa. It has 174 million people. It has a great uh, demographic dividend, and as you point out, it has a insurance penetration of less than 1%. Yeah. So I guess uh, the real excitement for us is uh, that we've now been able to acquire the other 50% in this business. Uh, alongside that, we have a, a business in Ghana, so we see some interesting regional opportunities that we can put together now. Uh, the 50% uh, uh, acquisition also gives us the opportunity now to own the business as a wholly owned subsidiary and will give us much more flexibility into the future. So that's quite exciting. Um, and I guess uh, if you really want to have a presence in Africa as a player, then you cannot exclude the Nigerian market. Viv? Yes, Bloom, it's Viv Gavande here. Just a question with regards to this acquisition. I mean, uh, looking at what happened in MTN, is there not an advantage to be a partial owner of a company as opposed to wholly owned? Uh, a full uh, owner of a company, especially when you're going to be effectively a foreign company owning 100% uh, of uh, uh, a, a company in Nigeria. Does not the fact that you had a 50% uh, partnership give you some kind of cover? It, it, I think it's a number of... Yeah, I think that's an important point, and I think there are different uh, constructs of the, of the way in which you can enter these markets. I think uh, at this stage we are small in terms of the market size in, in Nigeria. Uh, into the future, I think uh, we need to look at uh, strategic relationships. Uh, but I, I think we've been there for since 2007. So we've learned some things about the market. We have a very uh, close relationship with the regul regulators in the market in terms of trying to understand what the uh, direction is that they want to take the financial services sector. Uh, but you're, you're right, you're pointing out a very important uh, aspect, and that is always going to be uh, that kind of exposure and that risk that you carry if, you're the, the, if you own 100% of the market. Bloom, um, I, I guess there are very many differences between our business and MTN uh, uh, as organizations. I think MTN is a very large business in Nigeria at this time, and I guess it does kind of get the headwinds or the, the tall trees that pick up some of those winds, I guess. Uh, Bloom, looking at the DNA of MMI, it's uh, two different companies that came together with great strengths. I mean, Peter Doyle, when he was at Metropolitan, uh, the actuary who really sorted out AIDS insurance, Momentum, a long uh, reputation under Hilly Mayer for innovation. So it's an innovative, solid uh, action company, and yet you need the local knowledge in Nigeria. I've been there three times, and you, you just as a South African coming in, it just looks and feels so different. How do you blend your, your South African innovation culture, if you like, with very different local conditions? Uh, David, I think, I, think, I think what's very important is for South Africans who go into these markets is that we do not go into, into these markets with a plug-and-play mentality. I think we need to sit back, uh, understand the landscape uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a very uh, deep way, and then work out what is the real uh, value propositions that we can bring to these markets. I'm very, uh, I, I spent two years in the market now, um, and when I first went there, I was almost overwhelmed by the energy that this market has. I also very quickly realized that, that this is not South Africa and we couldn't just bring products into the market to plug and play them there. Um, the other very important aspect, I think, that we all must always have uh, in the equation is that we need to work with the local communities. So we've had a local CEO on the ground uh, for a very long time, um, and we will bring in non-executive board members 
in that understand the local nuances. So it is a careful approach. Um, in terms of taking the innovation into that market, I think there's some exciting opportunities. I think uh, particularly in the mobile space, uh, we are busy with some interesting projects where we do want to bring kind of the mobile uh, 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 platforms into the market so we can reach, uh, I guess, a larger community in a much more efficient way. So for me, that's quite exciting. I think, as you rightly point out, these two companies that were brought together have some significant capabilities. We do understand uh, kind of the entry-level market from the uh, metropolitan uh, side, uh, but then we do have some very exciting, uh, innovative uh, ideas and, 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 and products and, and skills that we can bring in okay, from the Bloom, momentum side. Cut so I think it bodes well for us. Yeah, great. Viv has one more question. Uh, just a question. I mean, of course, you talked about the fact that you can't just have a plug-and-play method. So that brings up the question as to whether the fact that you are in Nigeria and Ghana give you advantage in some of the surrounding countries and in Africa in general. I mean, uh, is this going to be a case where each country has to be its own particular unique uh, you know, business model, or does it really give you the opportunity to basically use Nigeria as an anchor for a larger Africa expansion? I, I think it, yeah, I think it gives us, it gives us an opportunity to be a larger anchor for, for an African expansion. Uh, what's very interesting is we are going to start bringing the Ghanaian business and the Nigerian businesses closer together. We want to start sharing non-executive directors across these boards. And then I think we closer to some of the Francophone West African opportunities like the Ivory Coast. Uh, and what's interesting is, and sometimes we don't always realize the proximity advantages, flying from Lagos to Abidjan is um, kind of under an hour, and then flying from uh, Abidjan to Accra is, just a, is also under an hour. So that tri almost triangle of countries there can be brought together in an interesting way. I think, though, we mustn't underestimate the local nuances. So that's going to be absolutely critical uh, to okay. extract it, uh, no, no, advantages I'm, I'm, like that. Sorry, we are out of time. It's a fascinating story, uh, this company going into Africa. Of course, the mobiles you will need, because if you're going to rely on uh, Lagos traffic for your distribution uh, of sales, you're not going to get do very fast. Thanks to MMI Holdings Chief Executive for Africa and Southeast Asia, that's Bloom Khan, and also in studio, Viv Govender, Senior Analyst at Lahuma Capital. Thanks to them. After the break, we're going to zone in on Equatorial Guinea's infrastructure investments. See you in a bit.